somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. That's the answer. This is the Appleton Oak. I'm Mason Quinn. Folks, today we are taking a look at 2023's Society of the Snow. This was one that many of you wanted us to check out. Uh, I have not seen it. This would be a first time watch for me. I am somewhat aware of the story, though. I had seen Alive many, 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 oh, many yeah. years ago. And I was telling these guys I vaguely remember it uh, to the point where I remember remembered it being a soccer team, not a rugby team. So that tells you just how long ago I did indeed watch it. And it was, uh, maybe once, but really looking forward to seeing this. I heard it's an absolutely powerful film. Yeah. Uh, first time viewing for me as well. Um, if I saw live, I was young and I vaguely remember it, but I'm ready, willing, and able to see what, how their interpretation of it is and see, learn something along the way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I actually read the book, and and I've talked on this channel about you know um, you know my preference for for visual things as opposed to reading and the way I absorb information. But I did read the book in grade school, um, and did watch the movie Alive. Also, I believe it was in grade school or very early when I was in high school. So I'm familiar with the story and what happened, but um, I have not seen this particular movie and in the few years that we've been doing this channel i know this came as one of the highest recommended yep. films for so. us to watch uh knowing that it's you know a true story or based on a true story um obviously we you know we come in watching it with a different perspective than we would a fictional piece um but uh you know again came very highly recommended so I'm looking forward, as the answer said, to, to, to learning more. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, let's go. Un avión uruguayo se estrelló en la cordillera de los Andes. A bordo viajábamos 40 pasajeros y 5 tripulantes. ¿Qué pasa cuando el mundo te abandona? La respuesta está en la montaña. Hay que regresar al pasado. Sabiendo que el pasado es lo que más cambia. Ah, the scrums. Yeah. Just smiling. Always looked like fun, but never understood the rules. Oh, it was so much fun. Getting actually run with the ball instead of blocking. Oh, Ooh. smoked. Sal. Oh. Ay. Bueno, well, lo hubiese hecho mejor. No lo hubiese hecho peor. Una vez que hago algo mal, el campeonato pasado lo ganamos por mí. You. Roberto, o copias a mí, ¿no? Entonces cuando te digo pasala, es pasala. Cuando te digo que la plata del viaje es para hoy, la espero para hoy. Dale, muchachos, vamos arriba, que hay que llenar la mitad del avión todavía. Lo de la barra. Bueno, no había un sobre, ¿no, Coco? <risa> Tú eres mi hijo amado, dijo. Después de esto, el Espíritu llevó a Jesús al desierto. Si sí eres el hijo de Dios. Pero Jesús respondió, sino de todas las palabras que se han hecho. Santiago de Chile, 45 dólares. ¿Cuándo vas a encontrar un pasaje más barato? Nunca. Acá tengo la lista con todos los teléfonos de las minas que vamos a encontrar. Graciela, Bombón, Silvia, Fina, Beatriz, Cecilia, Nelida. Bueno, Nelida es preciosa, Gastón, dejate de joder. Ando por toda la calle de Montevideo. Esta te la quedas vos, que no la llegue a agarrar Gastón. ¿Ah? Acompañamos a buscar otra, dale. Está mal. Oh, just get up and leave after you knock that over. Yeah. No me vayas a ir al viaje con estos dos boludos. Por favor, te lo pido. No me van a convencer con esto, Pancho. ¿Eres un buen argumento para convencerte? Yo quiero ir con vos. En un par de meses te vas a recibir. Vas a empezar a trabajar sin parar. Vas a ser el mejor abogado de todo Montevideo y vamos a estar orgullosos de vos. Pero vas a hacer tu vida y yo la mía. ¿Te pusiste a pensar que este puede ser el último viaje que podemos hacer juntos? ¿Qué me querés hacer llorar también? Buds. <laughs> <laughs> Son las 8 de la mañana de este jueves aquí en Montevideo. <risa> Iniciando este fin de semana largo de cuatro días, que la pasen muy, muy bien. Bueno, vamos. Se van a portar bien. Vamos a ver. Bien, ¿eh? Uno, dos, sonreí, Javier. Tres. Oh. 
Bravo. Boy, they're really laying the groundwork. Me llamo Numa Turcati. That's what I was yeah. thinking, yeah. La mayoría son jóvenes como yo, criados con cariño, en casa cerca del mar. Para algunos de ellos, este es el primer viaje lejos de su hogar. Mm. I want to say that seems low, but I mean, those mountains are how far mm -hmm. up there, I guess. Yeah, I mean, when you look at that, it feels really, really low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. ¿De verdad que se quiere chupar a cada uno que intenta pasar por arriba? Sí. Esta es la cordillera. Nosotros tenemos que ir de acá a acá. Pero la ruta no es en línea recta. Por eso viajamos hacia el sur en búsqueda de un paso más bajo. Miramos hacia el norte en Curicó y en 10 minutos estamos aterrizando en Santiago. Abróchense los cinturones. En unos minutos estamos aterrizando en Santiago de Chile. Vamos a repartir por la vencida. ¡Arturo! Oh. <risa> Oh, that is close. Vayan para adelante que necesito el espacio para mí, por favor. Oh, at least. Wow. You know, I've been f flying for over a decade, 20 plus times a year, and it never, you never get used to that. Mm -hmm. Oh. 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 Oh my god. Déjame la mano. Roberto. Eduardo. 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 Marcelo. Sí, amigo. Sí, soy yo. Estoy acá. No. Oh. No quiero más fuerte. No quiero que se muera nunca más. No, no, contra la pared. Tanto para arriba. Oh. Mírame los ojos. Mírame los ojos. Estudio medicina. Soy sí, Roberto. ¿Vos cómo te llamas? Álvaro. Álvaro qué. Álvaro qué. Oh. Los amigos. Uno, dos, tres. Day one. Eh, vamos a jugar. Go. ¿O qué hablas? Oh, oh, oh. Que Dios nos acompañe. Si no nos mató el avión, nos va a matar el frío. Nos apilamos como podemos, vivos y muertos, mezclados. Oh. Oh. Agarrame fuerte las manos. Así pasamos la noche. ¡Nadie se duerme! ¡Se van a congelar! Gritan los heridos y los ilesos. ¡Suscríbete, papá! Abrazame. Abrazame fuerte, Pancho. ¡Ayuda! 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 Estoy muy vivo, Pancho. Hay que priorizar a los que están heridos. Vamos a acomodar este lado del avión, que es donde está pegando el sol ahora. Damos al que lo necesite el máximo cuidado posible. ¿Y con los muertos qué se hace? Los acomodamos ahí. A un costado, hasta que venga el rescate. Wow, they're giving them names and ages. Hey! Hey! Ashura! Where is your mom? Your mom died in Andor. Ciao, Papa. Nos vemos en lunes. Muy amigas. Confía. ¿Hace cuánto tiempo estamos aquí? Tres días. Mm. 
smart. Mm-hmm. Dame, dame. Gracias. Man, what torture that would be. You can hear the planes all around you. Right, right there is one. Right there. Hubieron haber tirado algo de comida del avión, ¿no? Y eso no tiene sentido. Imagínate que tiran un paquete así, se hunde en la nieve. No lo vemos nunca más. Traigan a los heridos. Boy, the sound effects with the echoing in the mountains is just insane. Roque nos habló de las baterías. Iban en la cola del avión. Para mí, hay que subir a buscarlas allá donde chocamos y hacer funcionar la radio. Man, just the fact these guys were in that accident and they're able to walk even mm -hmm. is incredible of itself. Que seguir. Hay que aprovechar que la nieve está firme todavía. Numa, guarda energía. No tengo ganas de llevarte a la vuelta. Tito. ¿Qué pasa? El avión no se ve. Oh, it just blends in. Oh my god. Holy oh. Shit. Volvemos. Ya van seis días sin comer. Anoche repartimos lo último que nos quedaba, un paquete de galletitas. Survival. Mm. Carlito se acercó para contarme que anoche se le acercó para decirle que si hace falta se come los cuerpos. Nos estamos muriendo de hambre. Si no comemos nos vamos a morir. ¿Comer qué? Fuera de comida. Fuera de proteína. Energía que necesitamos. ¿Sabes lo que es una locura, Marcelo? Seguir como Roberto. Estamos. El cuerpo se seca como una planta. Se seca el cerebro. No puedes pensar, Marcelo. Yo estoy mirando negro. Yo también estoy mirando negro. Oh. Es gente que queremos, Arturo. ¿Y ¿Cómo se corta un cuerpo? ¿Y quién sería capaz de hacerlo? Yo lo hago. Yo también. Is he eating shoestrings? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Susi, Susi, respira. Gustavo, ayúdame, por favor. No está respirando, no sé qué le pasa. Para las piernas para allá. Dame la cabeza. Está respirando, Roberto. Roberto, ayúdale. Dale. Esto es un cementerio. Yo no me voy a quedar acá. Go for the other part of the plane. Si muero, les doy permiso para alimentarse de mi cuerpo. Si siguen viviendo. Yo también les doy mi permiso. Disculpame, Marcelo. Perdónenme todos. Oh. Los primos Strauch se encargan del trabajo más doloroso. Fito es quien elige los cuerpos y los tres cortan a escondidas. ¡Eh! ¡Encontré algo! Una radio. Está toda mojada. Tienes que comer, mamá. No está bien, Pancho. Ampliamos la información de última hora. Acaba de finalizar la oh. Se realizaron 66 misiones de búsqueda y rescate con 17 aviones de wow. la Fuerza. La búsqueda se reiniciará a comienzos del año próximo, informó que en 34 accidentes aéreos ocurridos en los Andes jamás hubo sobrevivientes. 34. Comercial y volvemos con otras noticias. Porque están fabricadas con componentes de calidad. Qué lindo. Les pedí que esperaran el rescate para nada, pero si sí puedo pedirles algo más. 
Les pido que coman. Acá lo único que nos queda es la vida. Y la tenemos que defender por encima de todo. Subimos a buscar la cola del avión. Sin avisar a nadie. Improvisando. Hay que encontrar las baterías para hacer funcionar la radio. Man, it's just everywhere. Mm -hmm. oh, it's just on. Acá estoy esto. Es Daniel Yo, el primo de Fito. Está bajando el sol. Tendríamos que volver. No, se encontramos todas estas cosas acá. En la cola no debe estar El sol derritió la nieve y nos hundimos hasta las rodillas. ¡Allá! Apenas podemos avanzar y la noche nos atrapa. Cuanto mayor es el esfuerzo por salir, más fuerte golpea la montaña. Gus, come. Decime nomás. ¿Qué vieron arriba? Oh, oh. Solo hay montañas con nieve. ¿Hacia todos lados? Hasta donde yo pude ver, es lo único que hay. ¿Y hacia el oeste? ¿Se llegaba a ver algo detrás de esa pared de hielo? No, ahí no se puede ver. Ahí detrás está Chile. Hacia ahí hay que ir. Pero tenés que comer nomás. Si no, no vas a llegar a Chile. No mastico más de dos o tres veces y me obligo a tragar. Por primera vez pienso en la posibilidad, cada vez más real, de no volver a casa. Pero miro a Nanda y siento esperanza. Entrena cada día con una obsesión. Detrás de esa montaña están los valles verdes de Chile. Treparla es un suicidio, pero yo voy a ir con él. Wow. A ver, Vasco, te respondo, porque tu rima fue comprada. ¿Por qué no te levantás de ahí y salís a dar una caminada? <risa> What a change in these guys. Justo los 27 entramos, y eso parece una señal. Nosotros en el piso apretado y ellos tres en la suite presidencial. Mientras una tragedia se desata, desde mi hamaca veo a varios superhéroes sin capa. Y aunque a veces me gana la ira, estar con ustedes es un regalo de la vida. El 13 de octubre cumplió mi mamá. Lo único que le pido a Dios, como regalo volver, para el festejo no perder. Oh. Acá hay mucha gente decente y hay otros que no saben ni dónde queda el oriente, ni quién es el presidente. En la montaña la situación es intensa. Me dan ganas de echarme a correr como un puma, pero no puedo irme de aquí sin antes escuchar una del reservado NUM. En, en esta heladísima montaña, donde no camina ni media araña. <risa> en la heladera, en la montaña de la ladera fría. ¿Qué? De la montaña. ¡Vamos! <risa> oh, oh. Oh, oh it's, is it all melting? Um, oh, it's that glacier type thing we saw earlier. Bust off. Oh my god. Thank <laughs> you. 
Gosh, the way this is shot, it's like you're there. Oh, it's another one. Arturo, estoy vivo. Javier también. Liliana no está. Coco, Coco está muerto. Soy Roy. Marcelo, Marcelo, capitán. Marcelo. Marcelo quedó atrapado. Deja de tener frío porque deja de sentir. Y dejar de sentir es un alivio. De días esperando un momento como este. Un instante de calma. Un segundo de sosiego. Podemos tener toda la montaña arriba. Oh, it's 30 of October. Yeah, I mean, it keeps getting later into the winter. Hoy es muy difícil no pensar en casa. If they can get that snow out of there, mm -hmm. the fuselage will be more insulated. Yeah, I mean, it's tragic. They lost a bunch of people, but. Well, and at this point, with it being October, November, December, January, they got no no other chance but to get out of there. It's only going to yeah. be more snow. El hambre es insoportable. Hasta ahora, los Strauss consiguieron que la carne sea solo carne, carne sin nombre, sin rostro. Pero acá no se puede. No van a hacer nada. Para seguir hay que comer, ¿no? Oh. Oh. See the steam coming off it. Oh. Vale, mucho pasado que son chicos. Dale. Oh, oh my God. Volvamos. ¡Eh! ¿Qué se ve? They just smashed oh. the bottle. Jesus. Oh. Como está esa pierna? Nada. Es un cortecito nada más. Guarda energía. Hay que salir ya. Mira el sol. Hay que esperar. ¿Esperar a qué? A estar preparados. ¿Qué pasa si nos agarra una tormenta? Tienen que subir las temperaturas. No se puede pasar ni una noche a la intemperie. El deshielo empieza el 15 de noviembre. 
Ahí suben las temperaturas y hay menor riesgo de tormenta. Dos semanas, esperando. No, dos semanas preparándonos. Hasta ahora siempre salimos de manera... Yo me aporto. Una, una mano. Desde la cabeza, muy despacito. Para arriba. Oh. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Ahí. Subámosle la ropa despacio. Así. Oh, man. Bad sores. Oh. Yo sé lo duro que es. Pero vos tenés las mejores piernas del equipo. Tenés que caminar por los demás. Oh, man. Arturo Nogueira tiene los pulmones encharcados. Gustavo intenta ayudarlo, pero nadie puede respirar por él. He looked like he was doing so good there for a while, too. Well, they all were for a minute until this first storm came. Somos cuatro voluntarios. Bajamos para el lado de Argentina. Más abrigados. Uma, ¿estás bien? Oh. Mm. Está infectada. Hay que volver. No podemos cargar a Numa. Roberto. Me vuelvo solo. El avión está acá nomás. Perdón. A mí no me separaban más que unos pocos centímetros hasta la superficie, así que ahí pude sacar la cabeza y, y gritarle con todas las fuerzas que tenía. Liliana aguantaba, veía que pasaban por arriba de ella y, y le gritaba, por favor, no pisen. Pero yo no me podía mover porque tenía los pies aprisionados contra su pecho. Y si hacía fuerza para salir, la iba a hundir más en la nieve. ¿Qué sentido tiene eso, no? Wow. Estuvimos caminando hacia el este unas dos, tres horas, hasta que de repente detrás de una loma apareció la cola. No le íbamos a encontrar nunca. Se catapultó para adelante. Estaba todo lleno de valijas desperdigadas, abrigos limpios, lleno de botellas de ron. Cigarrillos. Wow. Chocolate. So they came back. Huh. Tenías razón, Numa. Pasamos una noche en el intemperio. Y sobrevivimos de mirar. Pero encontramos la batería del avión. Oh. Estaban en la cola. Va a ser más fácil traer la radio para acá. ¿Viste que Roy arregló la radio portátil? Bueno, Roberto está convencido de que puede hacer funcionar la del avión. Vamos a volver de nuevo. Hay que intentarlo. Nando, Roberto y Tintín salen con Roy a la cola del avión. Ojalá pudiera ir con ellos. It's crazy that after 30 days, those batteries... We're still good in that cold. Tiene mucho miedo, pero se la juega por el grupo. I gotta figure a car battery to sit out in the cold for 30 days and still be fine. Yeah. 166017. Si no anda la radio. Hola, hola. Somos los uruguayos que caímos en los Andes. ¿Me escuchan? Estamos acá. Hola. Cada día que pasa, perdemos un poquito más de vida. Las raciones de comida no alcanzan y saqueamos los huesos. Lo que al principio parecía impensable, se convirtió en habitual. 
Oh. Después dejamos de darle importancia. ¿Qué pasó? No funcionó lo de la radio. ¿Cuándo salimos, Roberto? Roberto. ¿Cuándo? En cuanto esté el sobre listo. 58 días después que desapareció. Jesus. Oh. Faere Uruguaya, con 40 pasajeros y 5 tripulantes, flotado tras la a Chile a un equipo de rugby del club Old Christians y sus acompañantes, la Fuerza Aérea acondicionó especialmente un avión C-47 que retomará la búsqueda en la cordillera de los Andes. Vale, Roberto. No tiene sentido volver al principio. Dijeron que nos van a buscar. Unos pelotudos que pasaron por encima nuestro y, y no nos vieron. Mm. Hace dos meses que estamos acá. Dos meses, Roberto. ¿Y vos todavía crees que piensan que estamos vivos? ¿Estamos vivos? ¿Vivos? Mirá cómo estamos. Míralo. Esto no es estar vivos. Mirá que acá no salimos solo rezando. ¿Y ustedes pretenden subir la montaña durmiendo en esto? Ya sé, Roberto. Pará. Roberto. ¿No te gustó? Chacho. Mírame acá para una fotito. Quintín se empeña en sacar fotografías. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Right there. Yeah. Me pregunto para quién serán esas imágenes. Para nosotros. Oh. Que tenés mi permiso para usar mi cuerpo. Y sé que yo no voy a volver a... No digas eso. Estoy preparado para lo que viene. Pero vos no estamos. Y me pone muy feliz saber que ustedes sí lo van a lograr. Eso me pone contento, Nando. Oh. Gracias. Me llamo Numa. Morí el 11 de diciembre de 1972, mientras dormía. Salimos mañana. ¡Mucha suerte! ¡Suerte! ¡Vamos, eh! ¡Miren a los dos lados antes de cruzar y después no se olviden nosotros! Just more mountains. Oh my oh. god. Yeah, you, know, you get that far and you think you're maybe close and nowhere near. Andy Roberto sigue. Hacia el oeste. Acordamos que me vuelva para que les dure más la comida. Desde arriba se ven unos picos más bajos. Tienen un color como más amarronado. I suppose if he gives them their food, they can go a third longer. Man, he can go back. Instead of seven days, they might get eight or nine. Yeah, now they have enough yeah. for them. Nada les va a parar. Oh, 
Jesus Christ. Oh. Unbelievable. Magic. <sighs> easier to walk through that mm -hmm. gosh you just gotta get down there though yeah i mean the the fact they're doing that without climbing gear and the risk of an ankle or a leg and the fact that they so are doing that it, right there is enough yeah, to roll your ankle a easily times over <sighs> God, that's the first time they probably had a fire in forever, mm -hmm. too. Fresh water. Roberto! Roberto! Cando! Oh! Hace 10 días que estamos caminando. Tenemos que salir rápido de aquí y no sabemos cómo. Llamada a San Fernando. No tenemos comida. Estamos débiles. Arriba. ¿Cuándo nos van a buscar arriba? Por favor. Por favor. No podemos ni caminar. Oh, my oh God. man. Mm -hmm. Hot food, the way it's the way this is shot is just incredible. You're gonna get like a special report, maybe? Or? Mm, I'm hoping so. Amigos oyentes, este programa para ampliar la información que les adelantamos a sus porque ya se conoce la identidad de los dos jóvenes sobrevivientes. Se estrelló hace 71 días en los Andes. Se trata de Roberto Canesa y Fernando. Oh, they knew they were getting rescued. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Big guy, in it. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I bet one of those guys still fucking has that today. ¿Qué hacemos con todo esto? Oh. Stuff for the families. Daniel Fernandez. Daniel Fernandez. I wonder if that's oh, the real thing. Oh, footage. I'm sure it probably is. de diciembre de 1972, 16 sobrevivientes regresaron de los Andes. Hoy mi voz suena con sus palabras. Cuenta que todos fuimos fundamentales. Esta es nuestra historia. Sí. 
se hizo un milagro. Se ¿Qué hizo milagro, un milagro. ¿Qué milagro? El recibimiento es sobrecogedor. ¿Qué hace acá esta multitud? Quieren acercarse a mis amigos, tocarlos, saberlo todo. ¿Qué les pasó en la montaña? Preguntan los periodistas con sus cámaras y sus micrófonos. Preguntan los médicos con sus exámenes y sus instrumentos. ¿Qué ven? Les asustan sus ropas sucias, sus cuerpos esqueléticos quemados por el sol. Oh. La mugre de sus pieles. Los periódicos hablan de los héroes de los Andes, los que regresaron de la muerte para reencontrarse con sus padres, sus madres, Parece su <risa> sus novias y sus hijos. Pero ellos no se sienten héroes, porque estuvieron muertos como nosotros, y solo ellos regresaron. Y al recordarnos, se preguntan por qué no volvimos juntos. ¿Qué sentido tiene? Denle a ustedes el sentido. Ustedes son la respuesta. Vivan cuidándose unos a otros, y cuéntenle a todos lo que hicimos en la montaña. Holy cow, folks, man, I, we've seen some stuff on this channel and, uh, you know, some things that I never would have watched. And this one is, is right up there with, you know, a number of the real emotional, uh, movies we've hit on this channel. And, uh, if you were looking for <laughs> a reaction with a lot of, oh my goodness, crazy, unbelievable, you know, jumps and reactions from us. I'm sorry because he didn't get it on this one. This was just way too powerful to, you know, there was a, a couple of things to comment on and, and some things we noticed, but uh, I think most of our reaction is going to come here in the next, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, however long we take to wrap up. I'm sure it could go much longer, but uh, just an absolutely powerful movie that, I'm glad it was made to finally give the the individuals who went through this uh, the true recognition that I think they deserve. I mean, uh, again, you know, the book has been written. Oak, you touched on that. Uh, the movie Alive has been out. I'm sure there's maybe been some documentaries on it, of course. But I don't think there's ever been, well, I know there hasn't been anything done to this level that, shows it the way it did the the way it was i mean just the way it was shot let's let's just start with that because i think it can be really easy when trying to talk about a movie like this to kind of get all over the place but i really want to try to stick to some of the key things that really stuck out at me aside from an incredible story of you know uh humans enduring and surviving and just going through unbelievable circumstances to make it out alive the way that this was shot the different camera angles, the use of the light and, you know, steam and smoke and, and, and different elements like that, the, the use of different lenses that distorted the image on the screen, it was all done to make you feel like you were there. Uh, you know, this movie had a runtime a bit over two hours and it certainly didn't feel like it. And I felt like I was there. It was I've, I don't think I've ever seen anything shot like this. And that's what uh, one of the many things that jumped out at me and the, the use of the music and the sound effects were just incredible. They, they just, they took you there, uh, especially with the way we did it here on the channel with wearing headphones, it completely blocks out all the other noise that you might have at your house or, you know, wherever you might be watching it. And you're just, you're so focused on that. And the, the, the sounds that you can hear, the you know the, the metal clanging, the the snow melting and dripping, the the you know all the different sounds that I don't really want to get into right now, but the way that that was done just takes you there. So you have all those elements gathered together to make just an incredible story. That the the way that it was told and it, it 
to me, I don't know, you you uh, did read the book, Oak, so I can't uh, speak on that, and I'll let you do that, but uh, this, this movie certainly pulled no punches in showing what had to be done to to survive, what these individuals went through. Uh, just absolutely incredible, and uh, I don't know how it would be so difficult for these individuals to come back and be able to, to live their lives and to remember this. But, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it. And I like that at the end, they were kind of given a little bit of, uh, they were kind of almost given a little bit of, uh, you know, it's okay. I, I want you guys to make it the greatest gift that someone can give is themselves to their friend. I, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, but it was on the note. And when they were given that, it was kind of like, okay, we're going to, get out of here. Uh, all the sacrifices that were made were, were for us and the things we had to do. So just an absolutely, just a powerhouse of a movie. And, and all you folks were right. We had to watch it. I, I don't know if it was much of a reaction, what you were looking for other than, other than facial expressions, because I, I don't know what else you can say other than, you know, every couple of minutes, pick your jaw up off the ground for how just incredibly powerful this was. Uh, yeah, speaking on that tone, it's just the will to survive and the will to you know, do whatever you can to make it through this. I mean, I was thinking at times, like, you know, there's a plane, maybe they can somehow get some insulation from the wind and the cold, but then the avalanche hit and it just seemed like every obstacle that was set up against them kept on hitting. And, you know, and uh, luckily we we're talking about, you know, we were wrong when uh quinn was talking about like the winter and such yeah and i thought it would get progressively get worse progressively like, worse you know luckily for <laughs> luckily for them it got better and there's starting to be a thaw and the thing that kind of sucks is like i mean they probably had to wait that long too to be able to venture that way mm. to eventually run into the, the the cowboy on his on his horse and just you know what they went through, I mean, they got, they were at first sharing saltine crackers with mm. what looked like what a walnut or something, oyster or, or, something, oyster yeah. or something on there. And that was their food for one day. You saw it on uh, Numa that like he couldn't even, he couldn't even do his belt anymore. And that was the biggest thing since, uh, since it was being told through Numa at first, I thought he survived. Mm -hmm. So then when he was, when, you know, he passed away, it was like, wow, they're, you know, like I said, I, I haven't seen this since I was a little kid, and I didn't understand the magnitude of it uh, until, you know, watching this, where with the cinematography, mm -hmm. with the sound, with the music, you felt like you were there. You felt like you are shivering with them, trying to survive, thinking it. Because, I mean, yeah, we're from Wisconsin. We know what it's like to be cold outside, but not stuck outside with very little clothing because yet they had it was they just had, summer they clothes had, they had and right. they could do layers upon layers but when you're up that high and like they said as soon as the sun went down it dropped 20 to 30 degrees easy there's no way to combat that it's not like they have a you know a columbia jacket or anything right. like that this is you know this is the early 70s like look at when they were so excited they found the waterproof material that it's like hey at least then we can make a sleeping bag that we can stay perfectly fine underneath well not perfectly fine but Have not chance. get wet because once you get wet with that cold that's a horrible mixture as we all know but just their will to survive and then even at the end when he's where the one guy came back because he's like this way they get extra food i know they're gonna make it and mm -hmm. they did and I don't know if it was true or not, but I love the fact that the guy was like, I'm not getting on this helicopter without this suitcase that had everybody's things that he had collected. He was not, and I don't know if that was true or not. Let me know in the comments, but I thought that was even powerful as well because, yeah, if I was him in the same place, I'd be like, no, no, this is coming with us. Yeah, We're not was... coming back up to get it. This is coming with us now, and... Yeah, powerful. Yeah, he was ready to sit there and wait, wasn't he? It just shows you the. Well, I mean, and we watched, you know, an earlier survival movie, you know, earlier this year, and it was just, it was powerful, and it was on a will of a family to survive together, and this was a will of a team, which, and then extra people, but it was, it was them surviving together and showing that, if you try real hard, you know, you can survive anything. So, 
this was very powerful and um, yeah definitely got its due yeah yeah you know um i had said so uh, it, the movie was came out in 1993 so i was right it was about seventh grade i mean i know i we read the book and um it's one of the few times in in school if i'm being honest that i read the book before the movie you know it was just um you know, I was I was curious about the story. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit more compelling than the normal reading material you were assigned in school. So, I saw that, and I saw the the movie Alive in '93. Um, to my recollection, the movie Alive in '93, it it it, it was done okay. I guess kind of sanitized it a bit. It because I, I softened it up. Barely it remember softened it up around the yeah. edge. Maybe it was Very maybe it was it a TV, made for TV movie. Or no, it was no, it was, it was, was in the theater. It was a movie, yeah. but the, look, they softened it up around the edges quite a bit. And I, look, I can't. I haven't seen it since the earlier mid nineties. It's not a movie that you watch multiple times. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you right now, it wasn't done anything like this um this was a brilliantly told story of of survival of of friendship of the links that you're willing to go to get back to your family and the people that you love and you know you when we watch movies like this you try to put yourself in that situation and ask yourself what would what would you do how would you react how would you behave and like now as a parent the only thing i can think is get back to my fiance get back to my son mm -hmm. and um i obviously you can't speak until you're in that situation with any you just you just can't but just that like will to survive and and and, and go on i think would become so strong um you know, I do remember vaguely studying it a little bit. We had a, a teacher who kind of, we, we looked into this, and that's why mm -hmm. it was the book, and we all had to do the book for, you know, the movie, whatever. I mean, I remember talking about, you know, the backlash after it happened, you know, because there was questions as to whether it was, you know, whether people were, well, I suppose I can see the slave people were taken out yeah to serve purposely or purposely, it's natural um, or... you know they and they bring that up on yeah. the wikipedia page and you know luckily that was shut down and, and cleared up but there was a lot of, i mean it was a, a a very polarizing story when it when it happened and and rightfully so i mean you know you think about these families just 34 plane crashes they said in the andes and yeah. nobody ever survived yeah, I know. And here you have these guys out there. Their families thought they were gone. I mean, so for these guys to show up mm. and their families, I mean, I mean, what a, I mean, just, I mean, what do you, how do you feel if you're a, a mother or a father mm. or a brother or sister and you, you think for two months that your child is dead and then all of a sudden you find out they're alive? Mm. I mean, the, that, the, those are emotions you can't you can't put into words you can't imagine you can't even comprehend unless you're there so um i think this was very well done mm -hmm. um i think it showed the bonds of the friendships i think it showed the the difficulties that they faced making that decision and everything you're going to read about this or watch is a look these were not decisions that were made lightly no. to mm -hmm. to do what they had to do to survive but this was a good mix between um between not be it, it i i don't need to get into it too much but it got way more graphic than what they showed here like mm -hmm. the, the book mm -hmm. was very detailed like very detailed and they they consumed everything yeah. everything that could be consumed was consumed and i think they they, they showed enough here right yeah mm -hmm. they said hey they the, yeah. the 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 bones and whatever i don't need to get into it mm -hmm. but it was so i i think that was probably something that i mean i i i want uh, this was enough for me yeah i didn't want that to become the focal point the focal point of the movie and become the overwhelming theme to take away from the human drive to to survive and to live and to make it and the the bond between the people i, I didn't want that to become 
what the movie was about. And I, you know. I think the 93 one, if I remember correctly, they just show somebody walking out and kind of taking a piece off of a backside. And that was, I think, like the extent of it. Yeah. And I do vaguely recall the movie. I don't want to, I don't know if it got criticism, but they were like, you really, because the book, the book, well, I don't need to get into it, but the books, they, they consumed everything and they found, you know, ways to consume everything. It was, they did what they had to do to survive. And so and I think, one day is, I think this was 72. well done with being graphic enough to make you understand that this wasn't just cutting off a chunk of a, of a backside. This was, yep. this was, you know, severe, mm-hmm. um, just a, just a powerful, powerful f- film. And, um, you know, th- th- thankfully, um, with technology now, right. um, the likelihood of something like this ever happening again is slim to none to none mm. to none. I mean... Yeah, I mean, there's been crashes over mm. the ocean that we, we haven't found and, you know, things yeah. like that. But for right. the most part, if you're on land of some kind... I or, shouldn't say... There is a, you know, a, a an incredible Netflix documentary and very, I don't want to say controversial, flight MH370 or 870 or 380, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about, which is still hasn't been located. Mm. But for the most part... If, yeah. if, 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 I mean, if, this is a satellite right here. Yeah, so you know, it, so phones now, you know, even even like a basic iPhone, I can be completely out of service and it, it can connect to a satellite um, and, and ping a satellite location. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, with the technology, you know, it's, uh, I think it's fairly safe to say that this wouldn't happen again, but there's, there's no guarantees. No. But... Um, it's, it's, it's such a powerful story. Yeah. I mean, I'm... To the people who recommended it for us to watch, um, I'm glad it was recommended. It's it's another movie like The Impossible, um, obviously very very different. Yeah, it's another movie like uh, Sadar Udam, obviously very different. By no means am I comparing the mm-hmm. the circumstances and the stories that's told. In I make the comparison in that we watch it as a reaction mm-hmm. channel mm-hmm. to to learn to understand, to gain different perspective. Um, but at the same time, it's not, you know, Mason Quinn, you know, started off saying, look, if you were looking for the oohs and ahs from us, like that's, this isn't the, uh, this isn't the movie. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you guys wanted to, wanted to add really. No. Yeah. I mean, just that I'm, I'm just glad that it got its due and this has been a massive hit for Netflix and again, you touched on it perfectly, Oak. And, and we we said this about Chernobyl. I said this about Hacksaw Ridge in that sometimes it takes a movie or a series on a service like a Netflix or an Amazon Prime to get people talking about it and, and to get people knowledgeable on, on things that happened. And, and I think that's important it. because it's not, you know, a lot of people aren't going to pay attention and maybe in, in history class or aren't going to study up on things. And it's only through the medium of movies and TV shows that a lot of this is found out. You know, and that's a really good point that you bring up. This happened in 1972. How many people who are 20, 25, 30, 50, now watch this on Netflix. Like, look, I, I, you know, I've read this about this when Alive came out in '93. I mean, that's and that that's was already our, 21 years old. That's yeah. already. I mean, this yeah. is. Our, I mean, what's 93, 30 years ago already? I mean, yeah. you know, so you have people learning about this incredible story now, who uh, I don't know if uh, if this is in history books in at, at a at a scholastic level. Mm-hmm. You know, there's only so many books you can yeah. read for book reports and stuff like this. And I think that's the really neat thing um, about documentaries like this that are redone and retold is that it, it, it one, it, obviously it helps keep the memory alive of the, the people who lost their lives and the people who survived. But it's just this incredibly powerful story. It just tells it to a whole new generation mm-hmm. of people. And, uh, and on the flip side of that, it's telling the story in a different manner to people who are already familiar with mm-hmm. it. Like, so I think that's very powerful. Don't I, I, it's one thing that I, I, I discussed this 
relatively frequently on this channel and and this got a lot of publicity so I don't want to say don't sleep on it but don't sleep on documentaries historical documentaries right. on Netflix I had a very difficult time in grade school and high school I don't know if it's ADD I don't know ADHD whatever I had a very difficult time absorbing information through books I would read five pages and kind of forget what I read. Yeah. I, I'd be Same. off daydreaming. I don't know if it was a focus issue. I just didn't absorb the information because I didn't want to be reading it and maybe I just needed to focus more. But that's where I was at. I would read five pages and like I don't even remember what I read. I can watch documentary once or twice and it's like iron, mm -hmm. iron trap. Yep. And I think that's the other thing that's really neat about Netflix and Amazon Prime is we're having stories in historical stories that maybe were only previously told in books that wouldn't have interested people. And when you put it in a medium like this, you open those doors to so many other people to mm -hmm. learn about things. Like, I mean, how many people have watched Society of the Snow on Netflix? A lot. Yeah, it's I mean, it's I one mean, of their top uh, movies. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the millions. Yeah. If they had said, hey, we re-released a new version of this book, how many 20-year-olds are going to buy right. the book? How many 30-year-olds are going and buying the book? And then it's also going to be, you know, it's Oscar nominated. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and the thing, too, is that I think a lot of times, you know, if you're – if, if you're like I was in high school, you know, you may be, there were some things that interested you. I, I kind of leaned more towards uh, working with my hands a little bit in high school, you know, shop classes, that sort of thing. So I wasn't that interested in, you know, in, in a lot of other classes. Um, but the thing about a movie is that, okay, I, I can tell you the story about this plane crash and what happened. And if you're a high school age kid, you're probably like, ah, whatever. Okay, that's cool. All right, they did what they did. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm on to something else. But if you sit somebody down and they watch this movie, you can't help but not be drawn in and just and take the seriousness to another level and then all of a sudden it's not about jokes anymore it's it's a real thing well, uh, when you're I, when you're a kid you have a totally different mentality that's what i'm saying yeah. i think yeah. and as an adult you put yourself in that situation yeah. right but like I think you said it, uh, you want to get back to your fiance and and boy i would want to get back to my wife yeah. you'd want to get back yeah. to your family whereas you're a kid you just say oh yeah that, but, I but this I is think, what i could do but i think seeing it in this medium yeah versus is just being told about I, it in a book. I get that, but I also see, see like how it'd be. It's different from different. Oh, just, just like just like yeah, just like, yeah. just like just how like we watched Gladiator, Gladiator in yeah. 2001 and then watched it now yep. and had a totally different meaning. Totally different. It's still amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I will say about watching a book versus this, when you're or reading a book, rather, when you're reading a book, watch it. They can narrate somebody being sad. They can narrate somebody being whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you watch this, mm -hmm. the way they did it with the music, with the camera it's angles, beautifully done. with the, the the makeup it's so so powerful mm -hmm. so um if uh if this is your first time watching one of our reactions to a uh, like a this. film based on a true story we do not give scores out of respect no. for the f families of the people who were lost and the people who survived um we watch the films to appreciate them to learn but we do not score movies like this so so, yeah. so uh thank you for joining for joining us with this um thanks for the recommendation this was a very inspiring and powerful movie and so for appleton oak that's mason quinn i'm of course the answer good night pals